As a fan of fairy tale and romance, I do love my happy marriage because it has a lot of life messages, which is what today's video is about. Obviously, a spoiler alert, my happy marriage is the story about me, Josai Mori, a young girl oppressed by her stepmother, Kanoko, and her stepsister, Kaya. But yeah, I know what you might be thinking. What about her father? Well, I wish I had good news for you, but he only wants to get rid of her and use her by arranging a marriage with Kyoka Kudo, a notoriously bad-tempered military captain known for being so nasty and cruel that he has scared away all his previous potential wives within days of meeting them. But we are just getting started. There is another twist for this Japanese Cinderella, and it's that Miyo is a descendant of the Saimori family, the most powerful family in Japan, famous and feared for its spiritual abilities. But, unfortunately for Miyo, she herself is without these abilities, something that caused her own father to start neglecting and ignoring her existence even when she was only a child. Fortunately for her, this arranged Mary turns out different than expected. Moving in with Captain Kyoka, Miyu learns that the rumors about his cruelty had been exaggerated. Miyu sees beyond the cold captain and sees a warm protective man. And young successful Kyoka Kudo sees something that he is definitely not used to, given his previous fiances, who had all been carved by the same knife. A spoiled, bossy, manipulative and wealthy young ladies, Miyo, who is much different from this, awakens his interest. Despite being from a wealthy family, she is shy with the habit of apologizing for everything and feeling guilty. Besmused by this behavior, Kyoka decides to have the Saimori family investigate, and these findings shock him. He is disgusted by the blatant evidence of their abuse towards Miyu. But this is not the only thing he discovers. He also confirms her entire story, including her lack of spiritual talents, the thing that Miyu had been keeping a secret out of fear of being rejected. I mean, who can blame her? If her own father rejected her for not having spiritual powers, it's logical to think that a man you barely know will too. But luckily for Miyu, this is not a teen drama, and Kudo is a mature grown man that instead of being pushed away by this rather superficial discovery, only gets further encouraged to give Miyu his unconditional love. <coughs> Romantic. <laughs> but not everything is pink and roses for these two lovers. The world is soon queuing up against them. First up is of course Kaya and her mother. Logically, Miyu's half-sister could not accept the fact that her useless and powerless half-sister got the best match out of the two. As Kyoko's family is more respected and Kyoko himself is one of the, if not the most powerful men of the series. In other words, Kaya's fiancé, Koji Tatsuichi, is nothing in comparison. Obviously, Kaya is super jealous, so she gets the idea to capture and torture Miyu, attempting to push her to end the engagement. Don't worry, it doesn't end up well for Kaya, thanks to Miyu's strong will and loyalty to Kiyoka. Kiyoka himself, being warned by Koji of the capture, rushes to save his damsel in distress and ends up burning the whole house. Collateral damage! <laughs> collateral damage? Yeah. Oh well, okay, Maxi, collateral damage it is. Then comes the Emperor. Yes, you heard it right. The supreme ruler of this world will do whatever it takes to keep being the most powerful man. Already knowing that both Kyoka and Miyo come from very powerful lineages, their future children could represent a very big threat to him. It will potentially be more powerful than him and the emperor cannot allow this. So he releases the grotesques malevolent, otherworldly monsters to stop this. But, of course, who can save us from this? 
the commander of the special anti-grotesque unit, aka Kyoka. Kyoka beats them left and right, overpowering them, until he ends up unconscious trying to protect his subordinate Godo. Parallel to this, Miyo begins her own journey in the attempt to get stronger, under the care of her mother's side of the family, the mysterious, the well-known, the powerful, the Usubas. The head of the Usubas, Yoshiro Usuba, Miyo's grandfather, reveals that Miyo indeed has a supernatural ability and is nothing less and nothing more than the dream side, the ability to intervene in a person's dream. Wait, what? How? Well, when Miyo uses her powers, she discovers that her mother sealed them away to protect her from exploitation. I mean, don't ask me. I don't want to choose between family humiliation and family exploitation. Well, soon after Miyo regains her powers, she is shocked to hear Kiyoka's bad condition. When she wishes to see Kiyoka, Arata, Miyo's cousin, reveals that the Emperor wants her to stay with the Usubas permanently because of her existence and ability. Despite the consequences, she is determined to see Kiyoka and leaves. Even though Miyu recently discovered her powers, she decides to use them in order to save Kyoka. She suddenly ends up in the dream world and here she has to confront her other self, the representation of Miyu's unhappiness and trauma. And when Miyu's other self attempts to dissuade her, she declares that she will not run away and promises that she will live a happy life with Kyoka. Miyu manages to find him in an endless battle with the grotesques. Elsewhere, the Emperor is informed of Miyu's attempt to rescue Kyoka, and as a result of this, the Emperor tries to destroy Miyu and Kyoka in the dream world, but their combined power overwhelms and defeats him as the grotesques are destroyed after which Miyo and Kyoka finally awakens. Then what? What do you mean, Maxi? What happens next? That's it. Do they live happily ever after? Maybe you will have to come back to find out. Mm, okay. Overall, I like this story as you can really connect with the characters and see how Miyo and Kyoka bring the best out in each other how they grow both as individual characters while making the other one truly happy and how they also grow as a unit and future marriage. I also really like how the supernatural powers impacted on the story, adding more depth to the storyline as it adds more wealth and power to a person, especially when it comes to arranged marriage, in which wealthy families are the ones who have more powers. In other words, who has the potential to make future generations stronger. From the beginning of the anime, you can really feel for Miyu and understand the emotional roller coaster and intense aggression she feels after her mother's death, seeing everything she had transform into a different reality. How her stepmother and half-sister treats her and that she ends up basically becoming a servant on her own home. On the other hand, I feel Mijo's character too bland for my taste. This is most likely due to the time period that the story is being developed on. Mijo is always shown to be sweet, kind and quiet, despite the mistreatment she receives. But why should one be kind and submissive to a family that does not value them? Why did Mijo bear all the taunts and torture silently? Why she even pack her bags and attempt to run away? Why did she not talk back not even once? Don't get me wrong, I like Mijo and I think she is very strong. But the way the story portrays her, I see her as a victim, where she could have been her own hero. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Bye bye everybody!